Got him. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. I decided to uh, share a conversation with you guys that uh, I had with uh, somebody that emailed me, and I guess we uh, went back and forth. Um, it's very important that I share this. Um, <laughs> and um, he, I don't know, you know, I always say it's a waste of my time to try to eradicate racism. And it really is. I don't, you know, that's not what I try to do. I'm just trying, when I talk to an individual and I just try to find out if they're woefully ignorant racist or if they're just, uh, just, um, you know, a Ku Klux Klaner. Because there is a difference. And then I tailor my conversation towards whichever one it is. Right? Okay, because you can meet some people who say some of the most stupidest stuff is because they really thought that. Like, we were in a rural area one time where my aunt was. And um, when they went to school, this was like in the 60s, right? Early 60s, mid 60s. And when my cousins and them went to this school and it's all white, rural area, the teacher said to one of my cousins, I'm going to need you to sit up in the front uh, and a little bit over to the side because I don't want to get you mixed up with the blackboard. Okay? Um, my cousins endured that kind of crazy stuff or, you know, washing them on their hands and saying things like, oh, it doesn't come off? Now, which is something that happened to me as well. That happened to me growing up, um, going to a, a predominantly white school in the 60s. Kids asking, asking and checking if my color wore off. But this is a little different. This is just probably a little bit more, especially when you're in a rural area, it, it can be a little bit more um, crazy. But anyway, I was talking to this guy, and he was saying, well, he don't know, because all he wants to do is he's, he's a staunch Republican, and, you know, nobody can change his mind. Of course, it's one of his community meetings, and he thinks that the Republicans are getting a bad rap, um, and so I had to stop it because I don't want the meetings to con uh, turn political. But sometimes some people need to be shut down or either you have to leave because if silence is consent and if you don't say anything at all, then people going to think you co-signed that. Okay, Zeus, wait a minute. So um, uh, uh, I had a conversation. And so with this, this person ended up emailing me. So we ended up having a conversation, you know, and he said, what was... Uh, what was the worst thing that, you know, bothered me about the last 45? And I told him, I said, first of all, that like all them conversations, like, go back to where you came from because you don't belong here. And if people was to delegate an area for you to go back, where would you go? You would have to go to a cave because all the places that you are on the diaspora, you're not a native of that land. You took it. From the native, and then so then he goes where I come from. It's all Democrats, you know. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, what is he talking about? Wait a minute, guys. Here I come. So a damn Republican or Democrat? I said, it doesn't even matter. I said, any fool knows the difference between a campaign of hate and a campaign of inclusion. You stand for hate, so you don't belong here. Go with the rest of the deplorables that hate black and brown indigenous human beings. Trump supporters seem to be narcissistic, arrogant, pompous, and insecure. And then he goes, 
you seem to be very hateful on this exchange. You don't know me at all. You haven't met me. If you passed me on the street, you wouldn't know who I was. Yet all of the um, hat you go uh, to all you all of a sudden you go into the um, capital letter mode and throw all these silly slogans at me. You talk about inclusion. Why don't you include me in a friendly exchange of views, even if we might disagree on some things? Practice what you preach. I said, lastly, why would I engage a person like you? You've already shown me who you are. You started out. You brought up a certain party affiliation. You claim that you was that it would stop crime. No, you already identified yourself. And no, I don't. Uh, I do um, know you. You think a Jew would be offended if you got here and started praising Hitler? Think. Um, when people show you who they are, believe them. You came on here praising Trump and Republicans, and now you want to claim to be the victim? Typical. So then he goes, well, you misjudged me, uh, Khadija. We don't have to shout at each other. Um, I wish now... I had made a comment, a partisan comment. I apologize. <laughs> well, uh, go and uh, um, be well. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm well. I'm well enough to call you out. And I'm tired of the pussyfooting around and the in-between talk. Um, uh, you see a double standard here? You, and if you don't, I'm sorry. I, I'm sick of it. The gaslighting and the hypocrisy. You go and continue to spew your sickness and division. It's serious out here. Uh, people are dying, especially my people. And if you are truly sorry and value the human family, then you know that your words are powerful. Either they represent love or fear. Fear makes people afraid and their worst behaviors are unleashed. And then he goes, well, that's a fair point, Khadija. And sorry, for misspelling your name. Okay, yeah, fine. Trump does use all caps all the time. I wish he wouldn't tweet so much. Okay, you say words can represent love or fear. Don't you think they can represent both at the same time? We are human beings. They're such mixed bags. And I said to him, lastly, you seem uh, genuinely sincere. I respect that humbly. However, Andrew, this is a turning point in our history. All of the great civilizations of the past have succumbed to greed and the mistreatment of the poor. Don't forget, let them eat cake by Marie Antoinette. There comes a time when you have to draw a line in the sand. Either you love and tolerate people's differences or you come down an elevator insulting people and calling them names. Really? There can be no dialogue after that. What good can, can, can come from that, um, Andrew? That's the person's name. Honestly, please tell me, what do you want to accomplish when you offend people right out the gate? You, South America is, uh, is still the Americas. You know that, right? And besides, the USA is responsible for what is the terror that's going on over there in the first place. No, disrespect. But how old are you, may I ask? Don't you remember the Iran-Contra scandal where America supplied all of those guns to the Sandinistas in exchange for cocaine, implementing a corrupt regime? Ali North, Ronald Reagan, all that drug dealing and murder? When they sent all that cocaine to the inner cities of America in the 80s to fund a war in Central America, do you remember that? Oh, I'm so sorry, Andrew, to answer your question. No, you can only operate or your thoughts can only be generated through love or fear. I stand on it. It is an incumbent upon, it is, and it is incumbent upon us to find out what stimulus we are really operating under um, and why. I'll talk to you later. And I hope I have made myself clear. So obviously I did because uh, um, Brother Andrew uh, said thank you. And he got some things to think about. Um, it's not a matter of being right or wrong in this instance. I think it's a matter of making sometimes 
people think, even myself included, making you think about, you know, who you're talking to and what are you saying? And is this is your conversation totally ego driven or are you just looking out and thinking about how somebody else feel and what they going through? Uh, or is it all just about you and what you think? Because if it is, you can go kick rocks. So, um, and like I said, that's a lot of problem in society. And it was certainly a conversation uh, with him. And I thought I'd share that with y'all. Um, hopefully, um, he's, and now that he's, subs <laughs> now that he's subscribed, um, I just thought I'd uh, share with y'all how our, uh, uh, how interaction became, and this is a, a white male from the community. All right. Thank y'all. And I'll see you in the next video. Y'all tell me though, first of all, y'all think I was right or wrong? Should I let them, should I have let them have it that way? Or should I just have been kept my mouth shut and let him just, you know, say that dumb stuff? Sometimes, you know, I know people say it's a time to cry, a time to kill, a time to shut up, a time to listen. Y'all think I, I, you know, what do you think? You think that was one of the times I should have responded or not? Because um, I sure couldn't help it. All right. If you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and share. See you in the next video.